All right, good morning, guys. Uh, again, I will be offering a, a live session of these notes. So if you wanted to come in and listen to what I'm presenting right now, then uh, five minutes into class, I will start the presentation just so to give people time to use the bathroom, get a snack, or uh, just switch over into the meeting. Uh, I know that some people were usually slow to get in, so um, I'm just going to give a little bit of a buffer time. Uh, so this is going to be Chapter 7, Section 3, just the first part. Uh, so we're going to talk about calculating the probability of something occurring, given that we are dealing with proportions. So that's a probability of success. Just a little math background. Uh, when we have a ratio, that is just a fraction. So when you have a number of successes divided by the number of trials, uh, that is a ratio. And what we are doing is that we're going to have a known ratio, which will be our population ratio. And we're going to use that to approximate to um, other values dealing with our potential sample uh, and then our future values from that sample. So since we're taking a ratio and a ratio that we're finding and we're saying that they're about equivalent or at least comparable, that's what's forming this proportion. Uh, so we're just dealing with things happening out of things that could have happened and a probability of it happening overall. And then we're going to take that probability and apply it to any larger population. Uh, so that's the data that we're working with today. So 7-3, sampling distributions with proportions. So just as a reminder, p hat is the sample proportion and p is just the population proportion. So that's what is known to be true. And this is what we are finding in our experiment. Uh, to calculate it, as I said, it's R over N, which is your number of successes divided by the trials it took um, to get those successes. So given these variables, N is going to equal the number of trials, R is going to equal the number of successes, P is going to be the known probability of success. So that's the known population proportion. Q is the probability of failure, which if you recall, you just take the probability of success, subtract that from 100%, and that will give you the probability of failing. So you're either going to succeed or fail. That reminds me of the binomial distribution. Now, some restrictions that we're going to have with this oops, is that we have, instead of n being greater than or equal to 30, which was the x bar distribution restriction, that's the thing that I forgot to put into the video and I put into the stream, the new restrictions are going to be that n times p and n times q must both be greater than 5. This is kind of random, but what they found is that if you have a it's really, really small probability of success, you need a large enough population. Uh, and if you have a really, really small probability of failure, you need a large enough population or a large enough sample that you're drawing from. And so what they found is statistically that if those products were both greater than five, then you had enough of a distribution so that we could use the normal distribution to approximate for it. The mean of this distribution is just going to be the known probability of success or the probability of success that's given in the problem. And the standard deviation is going to be the product of the probability of success and the probability of failure divided by your sample size given in the problem. And then once you find that quotient, you take square root of that. Now, as I said, we're using binomial information. So here's just a little background. Uh, the data we are collecting is considered binomial since we either succeed or we fail. Binomial data can be represented by a bar graph where the probability of X would be your vertical axis and your number of successes would be your horizontal axis. So in this example here, I have a sample size of five because I can either succeed one, two, three, four, or five times. And obviously I could fail zero times. If we want to use the normal distribution, we must work with continuous data. Therefore, a continuity correction must be made to turn our bar graph into a continuous histogram. So I took a little snapshot of just the zero successes and the one success and showed that when I apply the continuity correction, I need to extend this bar to the right and I need to extend this bar to the left. 
what that does is it closes the gap between the bar graphs and I now have a continuous set of data from zero to one. And now I also will need to extend this a little bit to the left and a little bit to the right. Uh, I was just focusing on the middle part, uh, but this continuity correction would extend less than zero and greater than one. How we calculate that continuity correction, which I am going to uh, denote as CC, it's going to be whatever your sample successes, you are either gonna add or subtract this continuity correction. Now this continuity correction is you're gonna take 0.5 and you're gonna divide it by your sample size. So every single problem may have its own unique continuity correction. And as the sample size changes, you will have to change your continuity correction to fit that sample size. So it will be proportionate. Here's how we're gonna calculate the normal distribution. So it's kind of the same setup, hopefully this looks familiar. Less than would just be equals the normal distribution, whatever X value they give you. So that would be whatever success or whatever probability of success they give you. We are going to add the continuity correction to it, then plug in the mean and standard deviation. We're gonna write true because we want a range of successes. And what that's gonna do is let's say we wanted something less than one. I would have to move the continuity correction to the right of one. So that would be the adding of a continuity correction. And then it's gonna calculate from this value all the way down to this continuity correction here with the zero. Uh, so that's why we would add the continuity correction in a less than situation. In a more than situation, I'm still gonna do one minus, and I'm now gonna do the X value minus the continuity correction. So if I wanted more than one, I'm right here at one, I would have to go a little bit to the left. So I have to do the continuity correction to the left and it's from this value and above. So if I want this value and above, what I don't want is this value and below, which is why I'm subtracting that from 100%. To be between, I would take the normal distribution of the lower probability of success and I would subtract the continuity correction, mean standard deviation, true. And then I would subtract from that the upper continuity correction. Now here's the thing about the videos is that since you guys are the first ones to get this, you guys get to know when I make mistakes. Um, so I was actually looking at this and this, I actually need to switch these two around. Uh, so I'm gonna make that correction. There you go. And if you don't want to hear that mistake, then come in and hear the live session. Uh, so the normal distribution of the upper, because that's the larger value, I'm going to add the continuity correction to that one. And I'm going to take the lower and I'm going to subtract the continuity correction from that one. And then I am going to find the normal distribution from there to there. Uh, so that's how we calculate between. So I created an example that just kind of walks you through the steps and this should mirror what the problems in your homework would be like. Uh, so the average crime rate in the Capitol Hill in Denver is 111 victims per 1000 residents. Suppose we look at 50 residents. So I know this to be true, that about 111 out of 1000 residents tend to be a victim of a crime in this Capitol Hill district in Denver. So my first question is, can we use the normal distribution to approximate this binomial situation? Well, I'm gonna test n times p and n times q must both be greater than five. So real quick, n is 50, p is 111 divided by 1,000 or about 11.1%, and q is 889 out of 1,000 or 88.9%. I got this q value by subtracting 111 from 1,000, that gave me this, or you can take the 11.1% and subtract that from one or 100%, and that will also give you your Q. Uh, so I do some quick mental math and I say, yes, we can use the normal distribution to approximate this situation. The mean and standard deviation, well, the mean is the given probability of success, so that's 11.1%. 
And the standard deviation, I plugged my numbers into my formula and I got about 4.4%. What's the continuity correction for this problem? Well, I'm gonna take 0.5, divide it by the sample size and I get about 1%. So whatever percent I'm working with, I'm either going to add or subtract 1% from it. And that's what will allow me to take the binomial information and then form that continuity correction. So what's the probability that less than 20% of residents will be the victim of a crime? Well, I'm gonna do the normal distribution and then the 20%, since I want everything less than 20%, I am going to add the continuity correction to 20% and then go from there. So over in the Google Sheets, for example, we'll call this uh, example, what, number four? I am going to do equals the norm distribution of 0.21 comma 0.111 comma 0.044 comma true. So I get that there is a 98.8% chance that less than 20% of the residents will be the victim of a crime. What's the probability that more than 10% of residents will be victim of crime? Well, since it's a more than, I'm gonna subtract that continuity correction find the normal distribution of that, and then subtract that from 100%. So this is example five, and I'm going to do one minus the norm distribution of, and then 10% minus 1% is 9%, the 11.1%, the 4.4%, and then true. So there is a 68.3% chance that more than 10% of the residents will be the victim of a crime. All right, so now going back to here, what is the probability that between 10 and 20% of residents will be a victim of a crime? So now I'm gonna do the larger or the upper range, add the continuity correction, the lower range, subtract the continuity correction, and then subtract these two values from it. So you may be thinking at home, well, can I just take that minus that? Yes, you are right. But I'm just gonna type it in in case people wanna see the entire thing. So the normal distribution of the 0.21 comma 0.111 comma 0.044 comma true minus the norm distribution of 0.09 comma 0.111 comma 0.044 comma true. And so there is a 67 percent chance that between 20, 10 and 20 percent of people will be the victim of a crime. Uh, and I'm just realizing that I misspoke earlier that you can't just take these two values and subtract them because that's not giving you the value that you're looking for. Just making sure I got that all right. Okay. And so in your homework tonight will be a couple problems where you'll be doing things like this and on a spreadsheet and submit it. And yeah, so come on in if you have questions. If not, uh, good luck.